Dell's new G5 gaming laptop is in a thinner chassis compared to the older model from 2018, but sticking powerful hardware in a smaller space generally results in more heat. So just how hot does the new G5 get? In this video, I'll be taking a detailed look at thermals and seeing how much we can improve performance with some simple tweaks. The new Dell G5 is available in different configurations, and I've got the top-end model with Intel i7-8750H CPU, NVIDIA RTX 2060 graphics, and 16GB of memory running in dual channel, so expect different results with different specs. And you can find updated pricing for different models linked in the description. I'll also note that Dell has already refreshed the G5 lineup again with Intel's latest 9th gen CPUs, which came out while I was testing this one out, so expect different results there. On the bottom of the laptop, there doesn't appear to be many vents for airflow, they're just directly above the fans. Here's what we're looking at inside in terms of cooling, with a couple of heat pipes shared between the processor and graphics, so a change in temperature of one of these will affect the other. The Dell Power Manager software allows you to change between a few different modes, however I didn't really find them to do that much, as we'll see soon. I didn't test with the cool profile at all, as I found it to cap GPU performance to 300MHz. I'll also note that while you can install the Alienware Control Center software, this did not give me any fan control. The best you get is changing between the power manager profiles. Thermal testing was completed in an ambient room temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, so expect different results in different environments. I've tested idle down the bottom with the quiet profile, and the temperatures seemed about average while also being quiet. More on fan noise soon though. The rest of the results are from the combined CPU and GPU workloads and are meant to represent worst case scenarios. The gaming results towards the lower half of the graph were tested by playing Watch Dogs 2, as I find it to use a good combination of processor and graphics. The stress test results shown on the upper half of the graph are from running the ADA64 CPU stress test and Heaven Benchmark at the same time to fully load the system. Let's start with the stress test results, and I'll kick things off by noting that there was no difference in temperatures with either the default optimized mode or ultra mode selected, at least in this particular workload. When the CPU is at 99 degrees Celsius, it's thermal throttling, and I was only able to remove this by undervolting the CPU by minus 0.15 volts, as shown by UV on the graph. Even just using my Thermaltake Massive 20 cooling pad wasn't enough to remove the throttling. However, when combining the undervolt with the cooling pad, we saw the best results. I saw similar results in the gaming test at stock. It was running quite hot. However, even at this worst case 82 degrees Celsius, I was not seeing thermal throttling on the GPU. That never happened in any of my testing. It was, however, power limit throttling, as all RTX graphics seem to do in laptops. Again, there were nice improvements just from CPU undervolting here, with even further improvements with the cooling pad. These are the average clock speeds for the same tests just shown. We can see in the stress test results that the clock speeds are essentially the same between ultra and optimized profiles. That's why I just kept using the ultra profile for the rest of the testing. We can see the CPU reach the full 3.9GHz all-core turbo speed of the i7-8750H anytime we apply the CPU undervolt, which is honestly quite good. Yes, it's running hot at stock, as we saw in the last graph. However, not that many laptops in this test will reach the full all-core turbo boost speed in this combined CPU and GPU workload. And considering we could lower the temperature to what I think are more reasonable ranges once undervolted, or with the cooling pad added, at least compared to 99 degrees, I think this is a good result, or at least better. So to summarize, the CPU thermal throttles in combined CPU and GPU workloads out of the box. Though we can remove thermal throttling with a CPU undervolt and achieve full speed from the CPU in this worst case scenario, something not too many machines I've tested are capable of, usually due to power limits which are put in place to prevent them heating up. These are the clock speeds I got while just running CPU only stress tests without any GPU load. At stock, the full 3.9GHz all core turbo speed of the i7 was almost possible. Again, not that many laptops seem capable of doing this out of the box with A to 64 from my testing. This performance clearly comes at the expense of more heat though, as it was averaging 98 degrees Celsius and intermittently on the edge of thermal throttling, which is why the undervolt boosted the performance. And as we can see here, it's also giving us a massive temperature improvement. It doesn't look like the CPU TDP is really getting pumped up super high either, at least as reported by Hardware Info. 
To demonstrate how this translates into performance, I've got some Cinebench CPU benchmarks here. No difference to single core speed, as it's not enough to cause throttling. While the undervolt allows us to improve the performance just a little. Here are the results from the newest Cinebench R20. I'll move over to using this version in the future once I've got more data from other machines. But for now, have both. Here are the GPU only clock speeds while under a graphical only stress test. No real practical changes with a manual overclock applied in MSI Afterburner due to the power limit throttling being reached. And I couldn't improve this by undervolting the GPU. This is why there were no differences in temperatures from this test between stock or overclocked. So how do these performance boosts actually translate into games? I've tested with the exact same Windows, Nvidia and game updates installed. The only changes were the ones listed here. Far Cry 5 was tested using the built-in benchmark at 1080p. At ultra settings, there was a 4.3% improvement to average FPS with the CPU undervolted and graphics overclocked, the best case scenario. Thermals could have been improved further with the cooling pad, but as we saw before, the undervolt is enough alone to remove thermal throttling on the CPU, so it shouldn't change performance. Unless you're in a hotter environment or can't undervolt as far. The 1% low rose a bit further, 5.4% though there was a much larger 12% boost to 1% low at low settings, where we're more CPU bound. So we can definitely get some performance improvements with simple tweaks. If you're after more gaming benchmarks with the Dell G5, check the card in the top right where I've tested 20 different games. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle with the quiet profile on, it was in the low to mid 30s in the center towards the back, about average. While gaming, the wrist rest area stays cool, although the middle rises to the low to mid 50s. It was a similar result with the combined CPU and GPU stress test running, and once undervolted, it lowered by maybe a couple of degrees. Underneath, it was warm while under stress test. However, definitely not hot to the touch at all. No problems in terms of heat with using it on your lap, other than potentially blocking the small air intakes. As for the fan noise produced by the laptop, I'll let you have a listen to some of these tests. At idle with the default optimized profile, it was quiet, but the fan was still audible. If we manually swap over to the quiet profile with the Dell Power Manager, the fan stops completely. Otherwise, while gaming or with the stress tests running, there was no difference. Around average when compared to many other gaming laptops I've tested, maybe a little quieter. As we saw earlier, undervolting the CPU did remove thermal throttling. However, I didn't find this to change the fan speed. I forgot to record the fan noise difference from optimized and ultra. But take my word for it, they were identical under these workloads, which is why I just stuck to testing with Ultra. When it comes down to it, the Dell G5 gaming laptop is quite hot out of the box when under any sort of multi-core CPU load, due to a lack of power limit throttling, whether that be CPU only or combined CPU and GPU workloads as we've seen. A lack of power limit throttling can be seen as both a good or a bad thing. The clock speeds do seem to be higher than most other laptops I've tested. However, this results in more heat. It's a trade-off. Unfortunately, once the CPU gets too hot and starts thermal throttling, the performance in some games starts to become affected. There were many games tested where I noted other laptops with the same specs performed better. At the same time, the G5 also performed better in some games, as it was able to reach those higher speeds by default. So put on the undervolt and you should get the best of both worlds. Undervolting the CPU is the best way to help address this. This alone allowed us to remove the CPU throttling and allow it to reach the full all-core turbo boost speed even under combined CPU and GPU workloads. An impressive result, despite the heat that comes along with this. Personally, I don't think the temperatures once undervolted are really too much different from other laptops with the same specs anyway. And if you're willing to go with the cooling pad, further improvements in temperatures were seen. Perhaps more air intakes underneath could have helped with the high out-of-the-box thermals as we've only got some small ones just above the fans. I would have liked to have seen greater fan control options like we were promised at CES, as I found no noticeable difference between the default optimized and ultra profiles. The 180 watt power brick that Dell provided with the G5 appears to be adequate. I wasn't seeing battery drain during any of my testing or severe power or current limit throttling on the CPU. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules. There are different factors which will vary results. Primarily the temperature of the room you're running in, application of thermal paste, 
and even the specific hardware, which comes down to the silicon lottery. You may not be able to undervolt or overclock your hardware the same as me. It depends on the chip and its specific power requirements. So don't just blindly copy my settings and do some testing to find out where your stable point is for best results. It may be possible to further improve temperatures by swapping the thermal paste. However, as this is a review unit that I have to send back, I'm not able to change the paste. Otherwise, the next reviewer will unknowingly report different results due to what I've done. Undervolting, modifying fan speed, or using a cooling pad is much easier for most people to do anyway. And as we've seen, these tweaks did help improve performance of the Dell G5 gaming laptop. Let me know how much of a performance boost you've found by undervolting your hardware, and what you thought of the improvements here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for the full review of the Dell G5 gaming laptop, as well as future tech videos like this one.